but you type it. Oh, this is the driveway. Right. Yeah. You were there, right? No, I was not there. No, I, I guess we just came in the summer, so first time. <clears throat> the summer. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the regularly stated meeting of the Yarmouth Conservation Commission. This is the meeting for Thursday, October 19th, 2023. Uh, this is to formally advise that as required by General Laws Chapter 30A, Sections 18 through 25, and pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, signed into law on June 16, 2021, as extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, the Yarmouth Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting at the date and time noted above. The public is welcome to attend either in person or via the alternative public access provided on the notice of meeting available on the Town of Yarmouth website. Again, this is the meeting for the Yarmouth Conservation Commission uh, Thursday, October 19, 2023. Our first order of business is a request for determination of applicability for Gary Maintanis, I believe, uh, for um, Deborah Morin, 88 Merchant Avenue construction of septic system and driveway and land sub subject to coastal storm flowage. Come on up. All right. And if you would, uh, just state your name for the record and then uh, briefly describe the project, what you'd like to do, and then we'll hand it over to the commission for questions. Okay, uh, Gary Maintanis, uh, representing De uh, Deborah Morin. Um, the project is a new home on 88 Merchant Ave. And uh, seeing that there's a small area of... Uh, um, um, flood zone that happens to be right where the septic and the uh, um, the driveway is so that's why I'm here okay. if I can ask any questions I uh, answer any questions sorry all right uh, questions from the board um, it's a it's a pretty steep grade how are you planning on dealing with the runoff from the uh, driveway so uh, so that was a um, that was an issue that actually was not put on the plans, but um, as discussing it with our engineers, um, the easy, easiest way for us to do it is, is to put a uh, like a 500 gallon tank on the right hand side of the driveway, fill it with about two feet of stone and, uh, and uh, put a, um, a uh, drain across, across the uh, front of the driveway. Um, one of the things is the driveway we were planning on is we want to do shell. But as you said, that's a steep driveway. A steep so driveway. we're not sure how that's going to work. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to do tar. Um, we might not be left with any, you know, any, any other, other way, options. any other options. But what we want to do is be able to obviously put the driveway in and drive up and down it as we're, as we're doing the work and see how it works out. And that way, we would love to do the shell. So if you, if you do the shell, are you still going to do the drain at the end in just in case you have oh, yes. to pave it? Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. that's, that's the only question I have. Have you considered uh, some of that new pervious asphalt? It's, um, it's something that's uh, being used on like commercial street in Provincetown very effectively. Really? If we had to go for, to, for asphalt, that would be something that I'd, you know, mm -hmm. I've no, I don't even know what it is. So it's a it might great be, product. Is it really? Yeah. So what's just going to just seep through and go into the sand? I would probably still... I mean, I think we're going to end up doing, I've, what we're planning on doing is a cobble uh, curb cut. Okay. So no matter what, I mean, I mean, I think the best so. thing to do is still put some type of drain no matter what. Okay. Should be on the plan. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. uh, Brittany, any comments, questions, concerns? Um. No, if you were proposing, if you're pretty set that you're putting a drain in, it should be shown on the plan. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we can add an amendment right now as, you know, being signed off on, you know, no sign off, no occupancy. Do you want to plan, simple. are you all set with a amended plan that you would approve? We can also put one condition on an RDA. Put a what? No, I would say if you have, I mean, if you have to put a drain on, then you have to, you need to show a plan that shows the drain. But if that's the only thing that we're asking, then I don't have an issue if you, if you would uh, make this pending receipt of that plan, but. 
Well, one thing I, I do want to say is um, I don't want this to hold up the building permit. So I think making a comment in there saying that there will be a drain installed, not being able to get an OC until it's done, or seeing a plan, you know, not holding up the building permit, because uh, I'm, I'm not going to come back next month. I mean, that would be kind of a little tough. All right. And, and, and the, uh, the engineers are, like I said, um, you know, when we got a notice actually saying that we needed to bring all this information and, and little things, few things got confused, and because uh, it was just this, I guess, a, a smaller application we were doing, I got an email saying, uh, oh, we need all this stuff by Friday, the end of Friday, and that was last Friday. And the engineers are out, you know, two months. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to get those things that fast. The question, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, are, so are, are you saying that if you, if this uh, commission requested a, a plan showing that drain, that it would hold you up for nine months? No, no, no. I didn't said? say no. I didn't say nine months. No, I said I don't want to be. I just I don't want to be held up to get the building permit, and have to wait and have to wait for that. If we just put a comment in there saying that this needs to be done. Again, how long would it hold up the building permit process? Well, if I had to get the engineers, they're about two months out. I mean, hopefully they would do it for oh, me faster than that. A new plan, you mean? You know, that's, I mean, when I talked to him about staking, he told me they were three months out. And I said, you have to, <laughs> I said, you have to do better than that for me. I mean, you, you know, just to stake the lot, you know, and, and they were able to push us in just to stake the lot. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's the, you know, there's the, the whole, you know, the whole thing. Um, as of if it was a tar, if it was a shell driveway, um, I don't I don't see any runoff coming off of that. It just seeps into the ground. Um, but I'm still willing to, even if it was shell, put a put a drain. Um, I don't want it to be tar. If it was tar, like we had just said, that would be a definite issue. We'd have to put. Can I ask you a question? While, I'm sure. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Do you have any idea why a drain wasn't put in the plan initially? I honestly am not. I, I really am not. I mean, when I talked to, when it was first uh, said that we were going in front of uh, conservation, I had called the engineers and I said, um, he had said, well, you know, we might have to put a drain. And I said, well, why didn't we just put one in the first place? No, that was about a week and a half ago. Uh, the engineer that I used was on vacation. And I said, I, we, should have, we should just put it in there. I mean, for the cost of a drain, who really cares? You know, it doesn't, it's not that, you know, they're not expensive. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Anything else? Brittany, anything else? Nothing else. Anybody in the audience? Anybody on Zoom? Raise your hand digitally. If not, would somebody like to make a motion for a negative two? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I need to have everybody raise their hand? <laughs> All those in favor, raise your hand. One, two. Rick, are you up or no? Um, no, I want, I want a plan. You want a plan? I want the. Uh, I want to see it on a plan too. See it. We've seen it too many times. We've we have uh, discussed things and it hasn't happened. No direct offense to you, but it's just been our uh, the history. All right. So do you? Uh, and you're saying no, you're not going to do that and do that? No, I can do a I can do a plan. I just didn't want this to hold me up. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take the uh, the engineers just to draw that up for me. And when I asked him to do to, to you know to stake, what well, he said, when are you going to need to stake this? I said as soon as possible. He said, well, we're like, we're like three months out. And I said, oh, come on. Three months just to stake a stake a property, so they did do it for me. So anyone with not signing off on the building permit until the plan gets yeah. comes in. Yeah. Yeah. That I'd be fine with. You do that. Well, I'm sorry, what was that? So I think what we need to do then is amend the the uh, motion to um, approve pending receipt of a new plan that shows the the uh, drain uh, at the bottom of the driveway 
Um, Still a negative. And just change. instruct Brittany not to sign off on it uh, from the building from a building permit to not sign off on it until the the plan is received. Perfect. That way the order is still, or the, excuse me, the uh, determination still gets recorded, and we meet th those obligations. Yeah. But okay, yeah, I'm fine with that, Mr. Chairman. You, you understand what's going yes. on with that? Yep. yep. Okay, so I would talk to um, I would talk to your engineer tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I will. Okay. Oh, I will. All right. So, uh, with that, with a new motion, is there is there somebody uh, who would like to make that new motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Still a negative two. Negative two, which is a good thing. So a negative two is you don't have to file a notice of intent, um, and the determination will get sent out to you sometime in the next couple of weeks. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. She was the building thing, but <laughs> All right, next order of business is a, another request for determination of applicability for Dan Ogil Down Cape Engineering for Wesley Price, 44 Center St Cedar Street, uh, proposed addition to a single family dwelling and land subject to coastal storm flowage. Good evening, Craig Ferrari with Down Cape Engineering uh, here representing this project. Uh, this is a, a flood zone only area. Uh, that's the only resource impacting this site. Uh, the clients would like to do a, a small addition that's on sauna tubes, very minimal ground disturbance here. Um, motivation for that is, is because we're, we're expanding out towards the septic, so the sauna tube foundation was the only one available to them. Um, it's, it's a pretty small addition. Again, flood zone only. Happy to answer any questions that you folks have. Okay, oh, thank you. Questions? No. No. Good. Brittany? No questions. Anybody in the audience? Anybody on Zoom? All right. Somebody would like to make a motion to approve the uh, project for a, with a negative two. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next order of business is a continued notice of intent for SE 83 2397 Royal Kurowski WRS Engineering for Paul and Nancy Cruz, 52 Prince Road. Proposed dock and boat lift and land, so land under the ocean, coastal beach, salt marsh, land containing shellfish, and land subject to coastal storm flowage. That's what I'm going to say. We already know. And, Mr. Chairman, I, I know for a fact I've asked the same question at least two previous times. How many continuations are we going to accept? We have to until our regulations are changed, which are on the way. Well, even with this one, we're, we have to take as many as we possibly <laughs> have Heard to dish out. But, uh, I just had to hear myself speak this. Uh, I gotcha. Uh, so, for those of you who aren't on the same uh, playing field, on behalf of our client, we are requesting a continuance from our October 19, 2023 hearing to allow time to submit revised plans subsequent to the waterways approval that occurred on October 10th. We would respectfully request it be placed on your November 2nd, 2023 agenda. Is there a motion to uh, continue to Chairman. November 2nd? Uh, I guess a point of order or something here. Yeah. Um, when when a request for a continuance is made like this, is it required to give a reason for the continuance for the request? Well, their continue their reason is to to provide revised plans okay. based on waterways uh, waterways approval and suggestions. So okay. Just and to is be that, clear, is it customary for us to? Understand what that um, what the reason for the continuance always is. Other than, other, no, other than just that they there has to be a I mean there should be a reason. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But right. we may, we also make that much clearer in the 
plan regulations change that's coming forth. Thank you. For cases <laughs> might very much like this. Yeah. And just to be clear, the waterways did vote in support of their project, so no revisions are necessary. They just were unable to get us the plans in time to be included in the For commissioner's packets. At. Yeah. No revision. They changed it. They went to waterways. Yes. Waterways didn't change or make any make any changes to the plan. Not to they my just knowledge. Failed to get. They just failed seven to submit copies the plans. Of the yeah. plan. Well. I make the motion to continue until November second. Thank you, Ellie. Before I get myself into trouble, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Carries unanimously. Uh, next order of business is a notice of intent Dan O'Jill Down Cape Engineering for Joseph Gilmore, 179 River Street. Proposed raise and replace of existing single family dwelling and land subject to coastal storm flowage. Good evening. Craig Ferrari again with Down Cape Engineering. Um, here we have an existing residential site. Um, this one is, is flood zone only. We've got the 200 foot off Bass River shown that, that's just outside of the property here. Um, so we're, we're just beyond um, any of those resource areas and, and buffers to the river, uh, but we're still impacted by the flood zone. Um, we're gonna keep the existing septic system, so no change in the number of bedrooms for the new house, um, but it is being built up, uh, obviously updated to the new flood zone standards. Um, I've tried to strike a balance here and, and worked with, with the architect and, and the homeowner um, between building up the property and, and not adding too much fill in a flood zone. Um, you know, there is a proposed garage here, so they do have to build up and, and get into the garage there, but we've sunk that down a little bit um, from the first floor to not have to have a steep slope or, or a ramp and, and again, adding too much fill. Um, we've got a couple rain gardens in the south of the property to handle some of that additional runoff, um, just to ensure that none of that's going on to the neighboring properties, um, best management practices. The driveway is going to remain in, in roughly the same, the same spot that it is. A little bit of realignment and a little bit of an expansion, um, just for a turning tee to get in and out of that garage. Um, so happy to answer any questions that you have. All right, thank you. Uh, so my question has a lot to do with. Um, I see you get the two rain gardens. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a relatively flat uh, property, existing, existing conditions. It, it's, it's relatively flat. You're going up to, what is it, 12? 10. 12 for top of it's 10. 10 is yeah, the top one. of foundation at 12 with the grade one foot down from that. Um, so the grade's, you know, roughly 11. Yeah. But again, these are, these are flood zone standards. So we really, we don't have a choice of, of where the first floor is going to be here. Um, so we're really, you know, trying to blend that grade with the existing raised septic system. So we're, we're kind of benching off of that, um, working with the first floor, trying, trying to make it uh, an attractive house when everything's said and done. You know, you don't want it, you don't want a top of foundation sticking four or five feet out of the ground. It's just unsightly. So I've tried to strike a balance here between bringing fill in a flood zone and, and, you know, the aesthetic values and things like that. Not really my question. My, my question really deals more with the rain gardens and water and how much water is going to be coming off and shed off the off the pro property after you finish the, these finished grades. Yeah. Well, we will have more I water mean, coming off the property onto. Well, uh, right now there's properties. no there's no dry wells, so we're going to put dry wells. So any of the roof runoff is going to be infiltrated. Um, so really, it's you know some some grass slopes. Um, and we're, we're, you know, again, trying to swale all that area into, into a rain garden. So, you know, swales along the sides of these properties um, to, to collect that area. I mean, it's, you know, a little bit of lawn, but it's, it's not a significant amount of area outside of that roof um, that, that, you know, it, it's all going to be vegetated. So I don't anticipate significant stormwater runoff. All right. I guess so. I mean, I, would it, would if you're willing to tell me that that's five drain, is that what you're five feet? Something. I mean, something along the line here. I mean, it, it just seems like there's an awful. You're you've got a lot of contour coming off this the uh, driveway and moving <laughs> southward, and the contour goes right straight down to 
uh, <laughs> the, the lot line. Uh, and I don't see how that water is going to be vented or shunt, uh, shunted over to the rain gardens. Yeah. So, I mean, th this, uh, the client Joe Gilmore also owns and is currently developing the pro property to the south. So there's, there's actually some, some rain gardens going in on, on that property along this property line as well. Um, so I think the, the combination of, of the two in conjunction, um, you know, are going to have a nice low point for all of that water to collect on his property rather than infiltrating some of the neighboring basements and, and houses that haven't been updated to the flood zone standards yet. Okay, so if you're, I mean, if you're going to certify to that, uh, that, that uh, aspect, then I, I'm fine with that. I would say uh, you still need to come up with uh, some sort of planting uh, plan that shows the, the rain gardens, see, what, see exactly what's going to be in the rain garden. Uh, and and uh, address that uh, appropriately then with with appropriate planting. Okay. Okay. So I would like to see a, a new plan that shows shows at least the two adds the two um, rain gardens and their their planting palette. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a number of concerns. Uh, I, this is a fairly steep uh, slope at the um, on the south southeast corner of this property. And it, it creates what I, I'd like to describe as a, a pretty unfortunate convergence zone. Um, at your client's other property, I, unless I'm wrong, I believe the, the agreement at the time was not to bring in a lot of fill. And I was, when I was there uh, reviewing this application, we see that there is over five feet of fill brought into the north-northwest corner of, of that property. And given that, as I said, as I described it, it's going to be quite a convergence zone of those slopes running into the area where you're proposing a rain garden. It's, it's just... I mean, that is, that is the idea, to, to steer the water into the rain gardens. And, and I will say a lot of the reason for, for those high grades are the mounted septic systems to, to protect the, that portion of the environment, um, to keep those, those grades high, keep that septic, uh, you know, with proper separation to the, <laughs> to the high groundwater in the area. But if we didn't bring in the five feet of fill and create this extreme slope, it would not be an issue, but it, Well, it, I will say the, we the contours on the, on the plan do look extreme, but it, it's less than a, than a four to one slope. So it, it is, it's it is 20 a very feet, gentle slope five feet. Uh, yeah. in, in reality. It's nothing that would be steep. It's, it's, you know, a backyard that you could walk up and down with ease. That's all I have as chairman. Anybody else? <laughs> well, this is taking the assumption, if I may, that he'll in perpetuity own both properties. But if he sells one off, you're still gonna have that issue of flooding one property to the other. Just my, um, and the amount of fill is just, I saw the, the other part parcel that he did and the amount of fill is just staggering. Um, and yes, you did say that you wanna make it aesthetically as possible. This can go up and have um, the flood, the panels, it can go up and have stairways going up to the house instead of having this, all this fill to make it so that they can walk right in or out instead of having stairways. That's just, just my opinion. If we keep putting all this fill on Cape Cod, we're gonna end up sinking faster than we already are. Do you have any chance to remember how much fill was supposed to be permitted for the other house? I remember how much fill he's proposing for this house. <laughs> I don't remember the other one. I can pull um, it up. Um, I'm also concerned about the direction of flow. Um, it's, these rain gardens aren't gonna contain the flow from this part of the property. I think it's the responsibility of the homeowner of this parcel to contain its own stormwater. Um, if you put a swale in between these rain gardens, that could be a solution, but I don't see how any of the water being shed from the driveway is going to enter these rain gardens other than from right over here and directly over here. All of the watershed from the south I don't think is contained currently and I think it needs to be. Okay I mean I, I disagree slightly with that characterization I think there's quite a bit of, of area of this property that's that's being directed um, from most of the driveway area and, and most of those side yards but I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed mm -hmm. to making some some changes to add add additional swales on the southern oh, section right of the now. property. 
Yeah, I think it's just a, res a responsibility of these homeowners to contain all of their stormwater. I mean, I think you're going to catch some, um, but even if some escapes and, and whatever is going on in the property to the south, if they have waters coming this direction, it should be their responsibility to keep it on that property as well um, in the case in the future one of them is sold. I think that is a fair assessment. I would agree. I mean, that, that was my point all along, is that the southern the southern border i just I, I don't see how water is going to shunt to the to the rain gardens it's going to sheet right off into the other property understood uh, mr chairman if i may uh, how, when was this house built um it was, have to check it was built it's only 70 years old not 75 i checked okay. all right i didn't know if this it is that historical that distinction by five years <laughs> mm -hmm. okay 52. Anything else? No. All right, so it sounds to me like you need a couple weeks to uh, work on that. Yep, we, yeah, I, mean, two, I think or? we could reasonably get a revised plan for, for the next meeting, hopefully. It would be for November 2nd, right? Yeah, I had second. one more question. Hmm, this photo opened as a video, but there's a large tree on the near the driveway. Um, I noticed there's no other trees on site. It looks like they were removed at an earlier time. Are we going to be keeping this lone tree on the site, or is the driveway proposing for expansion into that area? I, I can check with the homeowner, but I, I think I think I've tried to design this this driveway to enter um, River Street in the in the same spot that the existing one is, so they don't have to remove that tree. But I can I can certainly sure. confirm that with them um, if it's their desire to keep that. Okay, yeah, that's that would just be good to know since there are no just other trees on the on the flood zone property. I'm not gonna do it. Thank you for checking. Oh, I lied. There's one. Will that also give them time to get a DEP number. They did receive their DEP number okay. earlier this week. All right. Um, it's in here. Yep, got it. Two four zero seven, and there were no notes. Say three four zero seven. Two four zero seven. Four. All right. Uh, so for this, if you're going for the second, then can you have it in by uh, the plan revision by the twenty sixth? Yeah, I think we can do that. Okay. All right. So. Uh, I just. I can say right now, with all that fill, they they can put stairs to the house instead of making that. I just uh, I don't like all that fill being thrown in there. So can I ask a question about that? As long as Ellie brought it up again, the the whole notion is that if they if if the house is raised up higher, then they don't have to bring as much fill. No, the house has to be raised up higher. They just want to be able to walk, walk right into out. the house instead of using yeah. steps or any panels underneath there which we've done in other places um, yeah that's just my opinion is that something the owners might consider I, I will certainly talk with them and and uh, make make as many changes to, to reflect your comments as I can okay so you understand what the bare minimum I think of the board is at this point and then what the other the other, the higher, the yeah, higher I think I understand that your comments and concerns, and, and we'll address them as best I can. Okay. Okay. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion to continue to November 2nd? So moved. There is a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Carries unanimously. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> we have some questions for you. Yeah, do you want to? Did we open that for, oh, for, for, pub, for questions? Shoot. Uh, hold on. Hold, yeah, I'm, I have to reopen it for, for just a few minutes. So if, I, I, I'm sorry because I failed to, to ask questions from the, from the audience. So that would be you first. <laughs> you would just state your name for the record. I'm Otmar Danner. I'm on 187 River Street, and on the west side of the uh, property. 
Excuse me, could you tell me your last name again? Last name is Danner, D-A-N-N-E-R. First name is Otmar, O-T-T-M-A-R. And I got a follow-up about the tree. First, let's start with the tree. That tree is right on her property line. Right next to the tree is my leaching field. If he rips out that tree, potentially he's going to be affecting my leaching field. So that's a problem. So I'm worried about that tree being taken down with its roots right into my leaching field, probably. That's one question. There's a question about the, uh, this is a divided prop property. Used to be two, used to be three properties. Now it's divided into two. Does this comply with zoning? I, I don't know. We're not the zoning board, so you would have to check with them. But I, we, we can only address the, the okay. uh, responsibilities under wetlands protection. Is, is, is a survey required? A survey was done. So not on my property. It, there's not no, on your property. It was on the... There's no markings on my property that shows the lot line. The, the engineer provided the, the, the surveyor to go out and, and mark the property lines. That's no marking on my line. There's no mar well, marking on my line. I mean, again, I'm not going to argue with a, with a surveyor, but maybe you can answer. So, so um, one common confusion is when we, when we survey these properties, we're locating existing monuments, um, but we're not necessarily staking anything on the ground. Um, now, once construction happens, then we then we will do certain certain staking at the client's request. Um, but rest assured that you know a full survey was done for the property. Okay. The uh, there's a question about you said there's going to be a uh, uh, what did you call it a oh, in the front there was going to be some kind of a dry well. Yeah, roof dry wells. So that's subsurface drainage for, for all the runoff coming off of the roof. So that includes all of the house, all the way in the back? It's going to come all the way to the front? Uh, so there's multiple dry wells. Oh, there's multiple dry wells. Yep, so there's, there's going to be multiple underground pipes and, and underground storage for that, that storm water. How deep are those light dry wells? Uh, well, they're fairly shallow because of, of the high groundwater table. And what I'm worried about is my property... You're going to have runoff coming to my property. Mm-hmm. Well, we've we've swaled all of all of the the uh, runoff into into that rain garden. So what what we're showing uh, for the contours is is to ensure that that all of that that runoff is mm -hmm. is directed in, into the rain garden, and we're actually putting a retaining wall um, on your side of the property to not bring in any extra fill for the new driveway. Yeah, um, so the driveway is going to stay roughly the same grade that it is. We're not changing any of the grades in that area. Um, so this, we're, we're not directing any, any runoff to the west there. But that, that retraining wall doesn't go all the way out. No, it, it returns back into the building and, and just handles the slope for the front of the house. Right. What about the runoff from the front? Um, so we can, we can certainly try and address... Uh, some of the runoff in the front, but I, I don't anticipate it uh, heading to the west of the property um, towards towards your house. When you've got this house that's raised up, now how high is the house going to be? Uh, so because of the flood zone, we have to elevate the first floor um, above the, the base flood elevation, which is 11 plus 1. Uh, so the first floor is going to be roughly elevation 13. Um, so it, it's, uh, you know, five or six feet above existing grade for, for the first floor. Is it two stories or three stories? I believe it's a two-story house. So how high is the house? Uh, the, building, the building height itself. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd, I'd have to check the architecturals, but it's, it's probably around 30 feet. It just seems like it's going to be this huge thing next to our house. I mean, you're going to be 10 feet up, and then you got 30 feet more. You're going to be 40 feet in the air. Well, it would be 30 feet measured from the street, um, but I can I can double check the uh, the building height. Okay. 30 feet from the street. But you elevated by 10 already. Be, you already got an elevation of 10, right? 36 feet from the road. <clears throat> Okay. 
you know what the water table level is in that area? Uh, so we have adjusted groundwater. Oh no, we well, so we're leaving the existing leaching, um, but I believe from the abutting property, it's it's roughly elevation two or three. Might be a little higher than that. I don't I don't recall off the top of my head. What's that mean? Uh, so probably five feet down, give or take. Right. That's about that's what it is on my property for sure. And what's the height of the driveway? Uh, so most of that driveway is, is going to stay at the, at the existing grade, uh, which I believe is somewhere around seven. And then just the end of the driveway towards the middle of the lot is, is going to go up to elevation nine and ten. It's a pretty big rise. It's a long one. I just believe you're going to have some runoff going into, mm -hmm. into that driveway. And then it's going to be the right next to my property. Mm -hmm. You got everything so high there. Now you, the driveway's at existing level. You're bound to have some runoff coming in there. Yeah, again, that the runoff coming down the driveway, we're, we're proposing to swale into the rain garden away from your property. So we, we, we will take good care to, to ensure that that swale is, is built in accordance to this plan uh, and, and that no runoff is, is heading west there and it's all headed south to the rain garden. I guess the other question is, since he also owns 150 South Street, now named 150 South Street, does that driveway, is that driveway going to connect? Uh, no, I believe we're, we're going to separate the two properties. Okay. Because right now they're using that as, as a driveway into the other property. Yeah, that's how it was historically used, but uh, the development will likely change that arrangement. Okay. Got any other? This is my wife, Claude Danner. I I had a question concerning the overall size of the house. Uh, we see an existing uh, existing square footage of the house being about six percent, and it's going to basically double in size on square footage. So not only the height is going to be elevated by at least a level, uh, one, one level, it's going to double in square footage. Is that, and, and the number of bathroom, you know, the number of bedrooms stays the same. The number of bathroom, I think, was going to increase. Uh, is that okay with uh, the, the existing, uh, Fields, which is existing. Well, that's uh, the bathrooms are so the bathrooms are a, a board of health issue. Um, we would only be concerned about where on the site the, the septic system is located, uh, but the, in terms of handling the, the size of the, the septic system and that sort of thing, that's dependent upon board of health. Um, but I'm assuming that you know the engineer has has worked. You know, numerous times, so they've designed a system that is of sufficient size to handle the, the bathrooms, and the the size of the system will fit in the on the in the in the building envelope of the of the property. So they're, they're retaining the existing system, so they're retaining the leach field, not the septic. Septic, they're putting in a new septic. Yeah, new a new septic tank, but the the same leaching field um, that exists currently. So under Board of Health regulations, obviously, then the the, the number of the, the amount of leach field that's required is sufficient for what they're proposing. Okay. This, uh, although the square footage is double. Yes, but the number of bedrooms is going to remain the same, and we, we comply with all of the other building and zoning requirements. Okay. So there is definitely a height question based on from our house looking. Now we will have to, uh, a hill next to us uh, and possibly water uh, dropping. Well, there is not supposed to be any water, any more water than what what the whole the whole standard is that they are not allowed to shed any more water than what previously came off the property. So if there's a significant flooding that, that occurs, and that's what the engineer is supposed to be doing, they're supposed to be designing this so that the, the stormwater is managed on site. 
and that's why we were asking for extra swales and things like that that, that would, would help alleviate that issue. Uh, I mean, ultimately, it comes down to that if, if, you, are, if you feel as though you are, are being impacted with more rainwater, more stormwater coming off that property uh, than what was, what was uh, previous, uh, previously existing conditions, that becomes more that becomes a civil a civil issue between you and the neighbor, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. I think the main thing that I'm worried about is that tree and other shrubs that are along the property line, where they're they're moving the driveway slightly, and uh, if they rip out those trees with the roots, they're going to be affecting my leach field. That's, that's one big concern I have. Yeah, I, I would say to that point, um, removing removing trees that are near a septic system would, would actually benefit your septic because you don't have those roots coming in and, and clogging up those pipes. Yeah, but, um, so but I've seen, I've seen a lot of septic systems that, that are in failure because of large trees that are too close. Mine is, mine is fairly recent, so it's not in failure for sure. But you, you're going to look at that tree. And yep, I'm going to I'm going to look at that tree and uh, determine determine its location and, and determine my client's preference. It's to on, I think it's on Gilmore's property. If you if you looked at the survey, you would see that. The tree's not on the surveyed plan. Pardon me. The tree's not located on the surveyed plan. Yeah, but if they marked the survey, they would see where the tree is. They would have to locate. The tree. Yep. And other shrubs that are right by there. There's yep. And and again, we can you know during construction we can stake that property line so that that nothing that's on your property is is going to be impacted or infected. Uh, and again, I you know I'm gonna I'm gonna speak with the client and uh, and determine their wishes for for that existing tree. I, I would assume that it's it's going to remain. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Y'all good. All right, thank you. Great. Check Zoom. Mm -hmm. There's a Zoom hand. Uh, anybody on Zoom, hand, raise your hand. Uh, I don't see who you are. Peggy. Peggy. Yeah, hi, this is, this is Peg Gilmore. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm Joe's wife. I've been listening to the back and forth, and I appreciate your, your uh, attending today and, and um, you know, expressing your concern. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Go ahead. Oh, okay. okay. Anyway, I just wanted to address some of the things. Um, you know, Joe and I plan to live there for a very long time and um, and to grow old there. <laughs> you know, and climbing a lot of stairs is going to be difficult for us. Um, but we, we, we certainly wish respect the neighbors and we don't want to do anything to disrupt that that uh, location. You know, my sister is a, is a resident there. who She lives right on River Street, um, 115 River Street. And um, I just want to just rest assured that we we will we will try everything we can to to be good neighbors and to um, to not Im, Im affect any any of, of the leaching fields with their butters. Um, I got a call from the people next door, and she's having a wedding in in the fall. Her daughter's getting married, and she asked us to please you know be concerned, be be considerate and not have any, um, you know, large equipment on site. And, and we will respect that. We will do that for her. So I just wanted to say thank you um, for coming and expressing your concerns. And we, we absolutely will, will, will uh, you know, take them into consideration to, to be um, good neighbors. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else on Zoom? Uh, raise your hand digitally. Hmm. All right, uh, if not, and there's no further discussion among the board, then would somebody like to make a motion to um, continue this uh, hearing to November 2nd? So the previous motion is no longer? It's essentially the same. I know, but I mean, that, that vote is? Yeah, we just, well, we, yeah, we just opened it up for the, okay. for the uh, public comment. That's all right, just taking my notes. <clears throat> Somebody like to make a motion to a continue? So moved. Thank you, Paul. Uh, is there a second? Thank you, Pat. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries sure. unanimously. All right, so we'll see everybody on the second.
All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Oh, and then also, uh, for the record, just let the record show that the DEP number for this project is SE 83-2407. Right. Uh, we have one request for a certificate of compliance for SE 83 435 15 North Cove Landing. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for SE 83 435? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Mm. All right, next order of business is approval of meeting minutes for September 21st, 2023, October 5th, 2023, and June 27th, 2023. Anybody want to take I a I can make a motion to any? approve September 21 and June 27th. I was not here for October 5th. And I wasn't here for September 21st. So you want to take them three separate ones? All right, so, so, so who wants to do September 21st? Uh, <coughs> and is there a second? Second. Thank you, Pat. All those in favor uh, for September 21st, 2023, say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimously. Okay, so what do I put for me? Just that I didn't abstain? Yes, 501. Uh, yes, you're, you're just, you had to abstain from that one. Thank okay, you. would somebody like to... Uh, work on October 5th. I'll do that. Um, it's okay, a motion to uh, issue the, or sorry, to approve the minutes for October 5th, 2023. David, David right. is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? I have to no. And just, four just four yeses. Ellie. You have to abstain too, right? Ellie and Rick. Yeah. You catching all this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right. And for June 27th, would somebody like to make a motion uh, to accept the minutes for June 27th, 2003? For this is for the workshop. Yep, so Thank you, Ellie. Is there a second? That was the workshop, right? That was the workshop. I, I you weren't here. Attend. Okay. I was here, though, right? Uh, yeah, I think Rick. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Rick wasn't Oost. there either, just so you know. Right. Okay. Rick wasn't All here either? Right. And Rick were not here. Another 402. So it's 402 and two abstentions. Got it. I think that was perhaps the most difficult meeting <laughs> minute <laughs> approvals I've ever had to deal with in my 20 odd years of uh, doing this. Oh, great. I like to do that. Mm. All right, uh, so next, uh, uh, next other business is Coast Sweep Beach Cleanup, Saturday, October 21st, 2023. We have movement on that. If you have signed up, please plan to attend. Wait to hear for your email if weather impacts the event. It's going to rain, so just it be windy. It's going to rain. Yeah. <laughs> it could be raining. It's every weekend. All right, and then uh, any other business not reasonably anticipated? Yeah. David. I just want to mention that I went to the wastewater management meeting on Monday and um, then attended the selectmen's meeting on Tuesday and listened to the selectmen also respond to what's going on with wastewater management issues. And uh, Rick was there um, representing Bass River Friends. And uh, I'm trying to say this in a nice way, but um, it seems that the state is for lack of a better term, changing the rules as we move along. And that's putting uh, things behind what it should be. In other words, um, permit approval has been held up until um, they resolve a couple of issues that weren't 
that the engineers weren't aware of um, from the beginning. So um, I said that we needed to get our state reps and our s state senator involved, not to change the rules, but to get DEP to move faster. And, um, <clears throat> and then the next night, Mark Forrest was a little bit more adamant than I'm speaking right now. I don't know if you were there yet, Pat, were you? Was. Yeah, so you heard his. Mm -hmm. And uh, the selectmen are gonna write a letter to the uh, DEP about moving ahead, because after all, here's a state who's been after us to do things, and then, you know, if you've been following this from the beginning, they were gonna, we were gonna piggyback them on fixing Route 28, and that's fallen apart, because the state hasn't come up with their plan, and now, um, they're saying, you know, there's certain criteria we're not meeting that we didn't know we had to meet. So I just wanted to give you that update that, um, you know, it's just, uh, to me, it's a boondoggle, I guess, is a nicer word to put than, than uh, I heard from the Sluckman. But um, did I miss anything? No. no. Okay. So I just wanted to give you all an update. Um, <clears throat> I think the selectmen are on it and uh, are going to be more aggressive about making sure things get done on time. You know, but the big thing to us, to me personally, is listening to, for since 2015 about all these things that are going to happen and how much the state wants us to get this sewage done, and then they change the rules and uh, or don't communicate the rules very well and putting roadblocks in, in our way. Moving the goalposts. Yeah. yeah, move the goalposts. Goal yeah. So, I just want to personally go on record to say how horrible that is, and mm. that's it. The other thing they talked about were the PFAs from the uh, what did I say? PFAS. PFAS from the um, airport, and how some of it's coming into uh, into Yarmouth, and they um, going to ask for more detail about where those are going and how it's affecting conservation land. They don't think it's affecting wells, but they did talk about whether it's affecting conservation or not. So just to give you an update on those two things. And they gave us feedback about the change in the regulations, which I thought, Brittany, did a fantastic job presenting to them, and you made their heads sort of spin with all that stuff you had in your hand, head that they just were having a, an amazing time trying to understand it. Yeah, so for the bylaw, we're hoping to put forth some um, video form of public education to get the public more uh, on board with the bylaw and have a, a firm grasp about what's in it because it is a lot of jargon for most of the general public, and we want them to feel confident about it and be, be behind what the ideas are in it. Um, but so we are going to put out some more information for the public to get a better understanding about what the purpose of the bylaw really is and what we're really trying to get accomplished with it. So we'll have those out in the next two weeks. And we'll see everyone at town meeting. And you're still working on regulations on the, to be released on the 24th? Yes, and hoping pending approval of the bylaw um, or not, we'll be having some regulation updates, and we'll be posting those online um, next Tuesday, October 24th. They'll be available for, for the public to view. And we'll be having a public meeting at our regularly scheduled Conservation Commission meeting on November 16th to vote on them and discuss. What was the date you're going to have the online? I will have them online October 24th. Okay. Thank When's you. the town meeting? Town meeting is November uh -huh. 7th. 7th. So the oh, our, 7th. Okay. Yeah, so we will be um, doing our reg regulations meeting on our meeting after uh, town meeting. Just not to put the cart before the horse there. Okay, anybody else? So one, one thing um, I just want to, um, uh, from the CPC committee, uh, Brittany yesterday made a very nice presentation to the committee regarding the, um, uh, her, the application for Phragmites management in the town is being considered and um, there's a lot of positive comments about it and I'm hoping that it will uh, sail through. And you guys vote on that next week? I think it's next, uh, next week, um, 
Yeah. It might be the next week or the week after. I'm not remembering. Okay. You know, but yeah, I'll just add too. We're so lucky to have uh, someone of Brittany's caliber making these presentations. She had all the answers for the folks around the table, and um, you know she really joins other people in this uh, in this um, uh, town government who are doing a wonderful job. Thank you, Paul. Here, here. Maybe we should keep her around for a while. I would recommend. Let's <laughs> not praise too much in public. Get him to pay him. Say you, don't wanna, uh, you don't want to let her get too uh, too confident there. You know. You want to make sure you pay them all enough money. Mm. <laughs> right, anybody else? If not, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? I so move. That's our second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Record. We stand adjourned at 557.